participate in the exercise before we get started. Hey. 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 Thank you for you might sit here. First, we're going to start out and have um, Council Member Martinez say a few words before we get started today. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for making the time to come here and provide your input on this comprehensive plan. You know, we want to hear everybody's voice. And uh, if there's somebody that's not here, and you want to share more, uh, share their input later down the line, you can also forward that to our office. Uh, one of my district directors is here, Jamika Allison. So she will be a point of contact. And my other is on her way, Sarai Flores. So feel free to reach out to our office uh, with additional uh, input. And I will kick it off back to Michelle. Yes. So um, Eric's going to come up and give some instructions on what we're going to be doing today. And um, we also have these, I'll leave them on the front desk. It's the QR code that takes you to the Echo Heights page on our website. And if you want to submit any comments after today, just use that form and then we'll, um, we'll be sure that we get them to the city council members. So, Eric, you want to come up and? Sure. Um, if I haven't met you yet, my name is Eric Flodiger. Uh, I'm with what's called now the Forward Lab. It's formerly the Planning and Data Analytics Department. Um, so we've been, a lot of you have, have been you know, attending meetings related to Echo Heights and related to uh, the land uses, related to street, related to traffic, a variety of different issues. Um, and in those meetings, uh, a lot of times we've been the ones that have been talking and we've been sharing information and asking for your feedback. Today is going to be different. Today we want to have you actually go to work and, and write down things and mark up maps and things like that. Um, so you're be, going to be able to convey information and sort of your perspectives, your vision of the future um, for this neighborhood. Um, in a way that we can then capture it and document it um, so that we make sure that we've got all the feedback that you all would like to share with us. So the folks that are at these three tables with all of the maps and the flip charts and the pens, so these are the folks that are really participating. So these folks over here are here to help and to listen and for a variety of city staff. Your touch member from this district is here at your um, so we're, we're supporting, but you all really are the folks that are going to be engaged in, in this activity. Uh, so, uh, and I think it's going to be going to be fun. I think you'll get a chance to really share some stuff and have conversations in your groups about your vision for the future of this area. So that's really what this is about. Um, we will be rolling in soon to a, a, um, a new comprehensive plan um, creation exercise, and that'll be uh, bringing in some folks to help us with to basically develop a new conference of plan for the city of Ford. So a conference of plan, uh, for those of you who haven't heard me say this before, and there are some new folks here, um, that's looking forward 20 years and beyond, and what the city is going to look like at that point in time. How are we going to accommodate the amount of growth that we're, that we're having now, that we're going to continue to have in the future? Uh, what kinds of land uses of a variety of types do we need? How, do we, how are we going to provide transportation access, active transportation, parks, all the different infrastructure that's required, community centers like this one. Um, so that's kind of the stuff of comprehensive plan. Um, so this is very similar to the type of input kinds of things that, that we may be having in the future for the 2050 conference plan. But this is focused on getting your, you know, your input now. Uh, we have already adopted a portion of what's called the 2023 conference plan. We update the conference plan every year, which gives us an opportunity to make changes uh, based on new information, based on needs. Um, and so we'll continue to do that as we move into the future as well. Um, but the 2023 comprehensive plan uh, was adopted uh, 
uh, by the council earlier this year. Uh, now we are, have two pieces of that plan that were put, essentially put on hold to have more conversations with the community. And that is the future land use maps that are contained in what's called Appendix C of the comprehensive plan. And that is, you're actually seeing some of that information here. So this is, this is kind of a focus, zoomed in map showing colors that represent different uses of land. Uh, and that covers the entire city, covers actually outside the city limits in our territorial jurisdiction. This map that you see right here that says Southeast Planning Sector 2023 Draft FLU, meaning Future Land Use Map, that, that is an actual map out of the comprehensive plan. We have 16 planning sectors, each one has the map, and each one also has a set of policies associated with it that are, you know, that are focused on that particular area. So they vary depending on where you are in the, in the city. And the one that Kelsey uh, yeah, Martins was just standing from, uh, that's slightly smaller is an actual page from the conference plan. So that's, if you see the, the future land use map for this area. So the southeast planning sector is what that is. On the left side of that map, you see a list of things. Those are policies that the city has adopted. They relate to land use. They relate to this specific area. So that just gives you kind of a framework of, of why we're doing this, what this planning stuff is. Um, so now we want to get into kind of how how we're going to proceed. So, and thank you, Katrina. That was exactly what I was going to So, Katrina, Katrina did actually uh, used to work in our group. So she's now retired and, and you know happy and has more time on her hands. We think, but um, so she's she's participating now, kind of as part of the community. Uh, but she's been through this kind of stuff before. So this team has. A leg up. Um, so what she's what she's pulled out is this image right here. So each table should have one of these. And what this is showing you is really the difference between the the plan and the implementation of the plan. So the future land use map, that map up there uh, for this sector, is part of the plan. So. It describes it here. This column is advisory. So the conference plan is an advisory document. It's not zoning. It is not the law. It's not a regulation. It is a plan and a guide for making decisions. So that's what the conference plan is. Uh, it has goals, policies, implementation strategies. It has this FLU future land use map with the colors similar to what you see up on the boards. And that establishes the desired future land use pattern. So what kinds of land uses does the city anticipate going where? And again, we're looking out 20 years. We're not looking out next year. We're trying to accommodate growth, accommodate change, accommodate business, accommodate residents um, into the long-term future. So, and then here is a little panel that says land use categories. And there's little colored squares, and that is establishing the community characteristics <coughs> by land use, is what it says. So that is what you're seeing in the color depiction of the type of uses that are anticipated to be in those locations. On the other side of this is regulatory. So that's the zoning. That's the zoning ordinance. The zoning is the regulatory side. So if someone comes to the city and says, I want to build a plant of some kind, or I want to build a large subdivision. It's the zoning that controls that, but the zoning is implementing the plan. Um, it doesn't always go exactly one to one. We'd like that to be the case. Uh, and there are times where we have to go and amend the plan because council approved the zone change that we didn't anticipate being approved. So there's similar zoning ordinance, a zoning map, and then zoning districts and the standards that go on. So this is just a handy guide for you as to what the difference is between the regulatory side and the guidance in the plan. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you just a quick overview of kind of what's in front of you. So we're going to do a couple of different exercises. Uh, one of them 
And we're going to ask you to identify, and we've got staff members here that are going to assist with this. Corey and Rachel and Connor and Isaac and Elise uh, are going to be helping out with that and kind of coming to the tables. But what we want you to do is we want you to identify what is it about your community that you love. So what is it that you love about your community? And this really is supposed to be this community um, and not another location. But So we're going to ask you about what you love. We're going to ask you about, uh, I'm not going to mess with that. <laughs> so, so what is it that you would like to change? So what do you love about your community? What would you like to change about your community? And that can be anything. It can be I want more sidewalks. It can be I want a white lane here. It can be I want a different land use there. So that's what that is. And then the last thing that we're going to ask you to do is dream it. So love it, what do you love about the neighborhood, change it, what do you want to change about your neighborhood, and then dream it. What big picture, what do you want your vision of the future for this area to be? So that's the first exercise we're going to do. We're going to start that in just a second. The second exercise is going to be actually drawing on the maps. So that's your opportunity. We've got, uh, we have these little dots. The little dots are color-coded, blue, orange, green. We also have these little strips that each of you should have. These are for voting on the, um, um, for voting on the love it, change it, uh, dream it. So we're gonna write all this stuff down, we're gonna put it up on the walls, and then we're gonna ask you to take your little dots and go stick them where you think is the highest priority on that particular list. So that kind of will complete that. We'll move on then to the maps, um, and that's going to be that's going to be mapping your neighborhood. So what we want you to do is to um, show us on the map. So write on the map, draw on the map, put arrows on the map, put bubbles on the map. Whatever you want to do, you can use the dots to identify specific things that write on the dots. Um, you have something here, pardon my reach, that is an example. This happens to be from the Las Vegas Trail Transformation Plan. But this is an example of what those kind of markings on a map can look like. Now this is the cleaned up version. We don't expect you to be writing on the map and have it look like this. But what we will do is we'll take the maps and we will recreate it in this kind of format where it's much more readable. Um, so that's that will be the mapping exercise. So so that's going to be map your neighborhood. So we'll have about 20 minutes for the love it, change it, dream it, about 30 minutes for the map your neighborhood. Uh, and then we're going to ask each table to just at the end of that to talk about the map. So we've got 15 minutes set aside, um, and you can identify someone that, or someone who likes to share information, can share what your group has identified on your map. So that's that's what we're doing today. Um, we'll, we'll cover a few uh, little notes at the end of it as well. So if you're all ready to begin. I have a question. Yes. Is any of this going into the staff's recommendations for the August 8th vote that's being decided about this particular various plan then? So in other words, are your recommendations for this neighborhood on the table tonight as part of this process? Or is this just going to be used in the future after the vote? So it's, a, so it's kind of a little bit of both. So you all, those, those who were at the last meeting saw some slides like this. So we have already identified three different locations where we are taking industrial designations which are showing up either on the dark blue uh, or the purple color and we're changing them to a different use altogether. So those three are actually part of the 2023 plan that has not been adopted yet. Um, so that that's one thing. Um, another thing that we wanted to talk about was uh, was policies as well. 
and we've got another. Go back to the August 8th book. So yeah. nothing in this room tonight will influence those recommendations you've already made about this year's comprehensive plan for Echo Heights. Um, I can't say that with certainty because I don't know what you all have come up with. But but yes, you have. You've been at the council meeting when these folks have told you what they want. They want a moratorium on industrial zoning so here and so on. And we and also submitted a seven-page letter. Y'all have seen those points are out there. It's not like you don't know them. I'm just asking, be honest with the folks about what this means tonight. Don't what, are waste they, that time. what are they doing this for? So, okay. so this this is a, this is a way for you to think about the future of the area and provide. They do nothing but that. How do they influence stuff on the eight? Is there a way for them to influence your remaining decisions about this neighborhood for that August eighth vote? Again, we, we haven't gone through the exercises, so we don't know we don't know what else might be identified. What we do not, what we there is there is an, an, uh, a constraint that that instead of uh, wholesale changing colors, we have private property owners, and Texas, as you know, is a very strong private property state. <clears throat> so uh, before we change colors on a map. Uh, we want to be able to have a conversation with the, with the property owners as well. So we've done that. We've had some communication with the three who identified them. Uh, we have not had additional communication with the other ones. Um, so that's that. So that is a constraint. It doesn't mean that it's impossible. Uh, and certainly what this does is it sets the stage for the next iteration of the company's plan. Okay, so that is really all that. This Eric, is this is very much Eric, but as it relates to talking to business owners or property owners, this is something we've submitted to you before as of last year and the year before. Like the Leon Capital Group who was coming along to build the 18 wheel commercial company in front of WM Green. 152 steps away from the front door. So this is not a new conversation that we're having with you. And basically all we're seeing is y'all are being evasive and dancing around the questions at hand. We are, I myself submitted to a seven page request letter that we put together, the Environmental Coalition for Echo Whites and Stop that we put together and submitted to y'all. Yet we haven't gotten a response back from any of the questions or the requests that we asked on our behalf. So as it relates to you saying that we're putting together things as he just asked, August the 8th, there will be a hearing as it relates to the 2023 Comprehensive Plan. Is there anything that we've been asking for the last year or so going to be implemented, received, accepted, or removed or documented that we can benefit from our community from? That's the question. Okay, so right now we have those three changes that we've already identified and shared with you. Uh, and those are going to be voted on um, on the 8th. Uh, the other thing that we think there might be a possibility that would that would essentially address some of the concerns that you raised uh, is a policy related change. So that would be adding a new policy to that map where Corey's pointing. So that's Appendix C. That's the sector lane use policy. Mm -hmm. So um, we think that one thing that we can do by the eighth that would make sense to address your concerns is to include in that a brand new policy, something that says something along the lines of uh, prevent uh, the, the expansion of the industrial growth center um, as, it, as it exists when it's adopted. So that means no new blue going out. So that's what that policy is. Excuse me, what you say it, what you, what you, what, and maybe I'm getting this wrong, but what you're saying is nothing can be done now. You keep talking about 25 years down the road. This is happening now. The problem is we have it right here now. What is done to address the problems that you're having now? It's just going to get worse down the road. We're living in mediocre circumstances at best, I think. And the city's going on doing their thing. They build bridges and, and roads and everything on the north of the corridor and all out of the lines and everything. Where is our tax money going? It's in the streets, the trucks carrying out. They're not even doing that. I, I do want to. I do want to add that this is the this is WM Green, correct? The blue. The blue. Yes. Okay. So across the street was zoned 
agricultural. agricultural. Now it's blue, but now on the proposed, you didn't change that back to agricultural. I mean, this is just one of the minor things that they're asking for. Right. This blue needs to decrease, if, especially if there's no, no development on it. But you've still you've made these minor changes to to try to appease this group, but you really haven't made any real changes because this was already agricultural before, and well, they, they applied for rezoning, right? And they were denied, and, it, and, it, and now it's blue. It and was green. It was whatever agricultural. Green. So 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 it's so it's still zoned agricultural, which is why when they came forward with a development proposal, they had to go to the zoning commission. But if you do recall, when he, they first went to right. city council and zoning, it was initially approved right. until we came in with our information and photos and documents, and then it was uh, it was um, pushed back for one month, and then it was pushed back for another month, and then they came back again. And so the thing is that councilman Beavis at that time said, "I can't believe that they keep coming back. I didn't expect them to keep coming back." Do y'all recall her making that statement? Do I see the council on 23rd? And so if we just decide to sit back and let y'all continue to do this, and we have jobs. Y'all are being paid to come see us, but we're not being paid to come see y'all. But this is our community. This is where our families are raised. We don't want our children to have to fight and push for health, healthier communities or healthy, uh, a healthy home if one of us gets sick and, and it's their job to come behind us and fight as hard as we did. They shouldn't have to do that. And see, even in 1989, when y'all started changing the area with no communication with the community, and that's all documented, that none of what was brought to the community before y'all started changing everything. I don't know if you were there at that moment, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't proposed to the community before it all started changing. And since then, there's been a big ball just constantly rolling to change things as it relates to this small little community over here. Perfect, a teen, a perfect example is Bowie Highland, they put four Sony on one application and y'all what y'all doing is so red lines you're so offensive stand up hold it up Tilton. You're so offensive. These this is how show it around Tilton. Show it around. Put it around the room because this is how y'all view us. This is how y'all are seeing us. Y'all are not seeing us as real people. This is what y'all are seeing. Show the picture around Tilton. That's how y'all view us. You can get that smirk on your face all you want, but this is real. This is how y'all view this community. This is how this happened. Y'all would never have done this if this was in a black of one neighborhood. Now, in fact, y'all don't ask us how long do it take you to respond back to white communities, a day or two? And we don't hear back from y'all for months. Even if y'all respond back, y'all don't, that, this is just how y'all view us in this stereotype. This is it. With that being said, as a matter of fact, we send y'all emails to the people who get the responses, Mr. McFarland right here, or Mr. Jim. Now, keep in mind, the Echo Heights 5-6 Coalition was started by myself, she, and her. Yet, when we send y'all information, we don't get it back. We get a, a, a copy emailed or a CC email from Mr. McFarland, and he doesn't stand this community. That's why I'm, that's why I'm using my voice as as a Sierra Club and as a white person to give them a voice because you don't respond to them. You don't respond to Tina C. Martesia. Ms. Ms. Goot responded to me. I sent an email to you, you know, before you went on vacation and you put us off. Well, but Ms. Goot finally responded and said she wants to have this meeting two weeks before August 8th. Or we get responses but, the day of. But Tina Martesia T. They've been asking for this for, for years, you know, this kind of change for years. And so I felt it was time to get involved. And so, you know. And it had to take us getting a title for y'all to even listen to us. And yeah. then after we got the title, it had to take us putting some white people on our board or on our team just for y'all to start responding to us. And that's really sad because that's the response we're getting now. As he just stated, the emails go to him and he CCs me. And then I forward over to them. And we're, we're sitting here, the president, the vice president, and the secretary. We're, we're sitting here. We did this. And the saddest thing is y'all don't respond to us. It's like what we're saying and what we're, what we're experiencing is not even important. Outside, then they get outside groups. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, and then you go out and, and submit outside groups and ask them to speak on our behalf. Just so I tell everyone in here, as it relates to any city official, Safe in the Six is a registered nonprofit organization, which is attached to the Echo Heights Stop Six Environmental Coalition. And it's registered. So the funniest thing was no one decided to ask us if we had any type of nonprofit registration or if we was, in fact, registered as a nonprofit. It wasn't asked us. Instead, you reached out to Community Frontline, you reached out to South Southeast Inc., you reached out to TCU. So you're talking about that grant? Yes. Yeah. And these are just the other things that you were, and I'm not upset, but it wasn't until now, remember Cody had the little nice video at W.M. Green the other day, and he had the before and after photos. But well, this is what it looks like before. Now, this is what it looks like after. This is what it looks like before. This is what it looks like after. But here's the funniest thing is, that information about that grant was never given to us. And then it was told to me, well, Ms. James, the reason we didn't want to share it with you because we didn't want to hurt your feelings. We didn't want to hurt your feelings. That was told to me. We didn't share that grant information with you because we didn't want you to hurt, we didn't want to hurt your feelings. Well, guess what? Not only are my feelings hurt, but the community is hurt. Their health is hurt. The children are hurting. The community is hurting. We're asking, our tax dollars actually pays you all salaries. And I understand that y'all have a big job to do as it relates to the community, as well as business owners, or people who would like to come and buy into the community. But we are residents there. And at the end of the day, when those businesses re regurgitate and change their locations and things like that, they leave, we're still there. We're been, we've invested into this community. So we've been invested into our health. We invested into the school. W.M. Green School opened in 1959. It was the first small black elementary school that was being bused from I am <coughs> and the South Side. And so you have this black school sitting right here. And the thought that, the concern that y'all even had for the school that y'all was willing to accept a commercial trucking company to be put 152 feet from the front door of this elementary school that's been sitting here. And then, just think about it. I don't know anybody in here who has CDLs besides myself and, and my husband. Anyone else that does, okay, I understand. But you know that if a truck is running and it has 80,000 pounds on it, that's unloaded. Let's just say one of these little four feet, three feet kids dart out in front of that truck as it's coming. You know how long it takes to stop it? It takes 376 feet to stop that truck. That's only if it's unloaded. Let's just say it's got some hazardous materials on it, and it, in the middle of them stopping it, it jackknives. And at that time, there's a spill in the middle of that street. And now we have a school sitting over here, possible different types of chemicals and hazardous materials, the fumes are going up in the air, those children are gonna breathe it. But it was already approved until we came in and asked y'all not to. But I guess what she's trying to say is because y'all don't stay in this community. You have no family in this community. You don't reside in this community. We're slowly dying. Our health is slowly diminishing. People have died over this community. Well, what mother and her daughter both died six to seven months apart? Different types of rare brain illnesses that comes on on certain people when they're in a coma, or they've been di they died twice, or you have another man who legs amputated. Everybody on Tahoe Street, on one side, every family over there, someone has died in it, and we're not related, so it's not a genetic thing, it's not a DNA. So just on that street alone, this lady has an 18 wheeler trucking company in her backyard, and then when she started making complaints, guess what happened? Cole started coming to her house and telling her she's in violation. Because the truck is saying, well, her backyard is in our backyard. How does that work? It's, it's like at this moment, she's being a target just because she made a complaint for, some, for her own health. And you know what so else is offensive, Tina? Cody said that there is no environmental issues now. Let's, let's just keep this in mind. Fort Worth is in trouble with the government for environmental issues. Fort Worth ranks 16 nationwide for pollution. Tarrant County gets a flat out hell. So I guess Echo Heights is the miraculous community that has no pollution. You know it's just off 287, 820, and 20. This one community that has over 200 industries, it's a miracle that has no industry. That's what you were saying, Cody. That all of Fort Worth is in trouble with the government except for Echo Heights. That is what this display was about. Y'all think we're dumb. Y'all think we are ignorant. Y'all have no respect for us. Y'all have no respect for our community. If y'all are going to come to us, y'all need to come to us if you will. Like Mr. Bowie Holland said, the city convinced him to put four different 
Sony deals on one application. That's how y'all do in black communities. Y'all will go to a white community and do that. He can take that to where he lives. He can take that to his own community. We send y'all a deal saying no more industry and Echo Heights and what do y'all do? Y'all turn around and put four on one lot. And he said he's in talks with the other landowners over that residential to get them to change environmental <coughs> industrial. After we sent and said no. So that's the problem we're having with people like him. He can take it to where he lives. You're, yeah, I'm sure your community will love it. Take it to where you live. Don't bring it to us. We don't want it anymore. We have less than 750 homes and over 200 industrial buildings <coughs> and industrial businesses. That's way too much already. Way too much. Now, why would the city over there mon monitoring those right. the different companies? Right. When we do the toxic tour, we give it. I think. Raise your hand here if you got an opportunity to do the toxic tour with us. There's at least 11. And so, with that being said, it seems like those people got a warning because all of a sudden they're outside trying to clean up stuff while we're riding through. While we're riding through, they're out there trying to cover things, clean things, but we don't know what their triangles are. And that's the purpose of hazmats. You're supposed to identify if you have a hazardous material on your property. It's supposed to be identified. It's supposed to be registered with the city. Because if something was to happen, explosion or a spill, how would we know what we're cleaning up? How would we know what agents to add to clean up this mistake right here on the ground? How would we know what to add that it won't cause another combustion or some type of bad chemical explosion as well? We don't know because no one is watching. It. None of these properties have had an inspection. None of these properties have been identified. Miss T actually drove through and wrote down company names and addresses. And the funniest thing is, the city doesn't have that information themselves. So when we ask, do y'all have an identification of each one of these owners or property owners or the businesses? Well, we have some, but we're looking into it. I'm sorry, why are we looking into it? It should have already been done to begin with. It's supposed to be updated. It's amazing how you don't come through here and say we're going to update the 2023 plan or 2025, 2050 or 25 years down the line. But when do our health, when do our safety, when do our community And when do our get generation updated? of wealth and growth come into play? When does that happen? This, what y'all are doing, is a different way of when Bull Connor and all the dogs released on all the children doing the civil rights movement. This is it in a different way. This is it in a different way. So, so what yeah. this is how the our city services have diminished. Our roads and streets have deteriorated. I've even talked to code enforcement agents back in the 70s about streets over here. They said, hey, they've already said downtown, this is not worth putting the money at you. We're paying taxes. We're paying taxes. They finally fixed edge with terrorists when, quote unquote, a police officer was chasing some oh, idiot yeah. down the street, hit a pothole, and tore up the police car. Okay, that next month they out there fixing the street, turn down, turn up the streets, putting a new street in. But it's been like that for the last what eight years. Potholes just get bigger and bigger. People come down the street. If you didn't know that hole was there, your car was gonna get messed up. But then it takes a police car to get messed up. But then it's sad to do something. What kind of what kind of situation are we in? You know, what kind of people do we have downtown? You know, which like to say we're totally being ignored. And it's almost like if we can't get this one way, we'll do it another way. We're gonna we're gonna wait, we're gonna work on you some kind of way. If it's taxes. Well, if it's just coming in with eminent domain, and that's what it's, it's, it looks like it's boiling down to. Hey, you know, uh, we got this over here, but this is the law. The law says we can take it. Well, no, you come and take my property, you take my land. Where am I going? Just like Tulsa. You're going to put everybody back on the street, like Detroit, like Tulsa, like all these other Chicago, Ohio. You're going to put a whole bunch of people on the street. A lot of people on the street are going to be older people like me. You're going to be dead. Well, I hope not. <laughs> they can bear me. I got two acres up there. Well, they tell me I got two acres on the edge of wood. But when I bought it, it was an acre and a quarter. 
but the tax department says I have two acres. Huh. But they have no plots downtown of it. I had to take my documentation downtown to show them what should have been on record when I bought it. And they still try to say, no, we're going to do this. No, you can't. Yeah, I mean, the city is going to have to change its redlining policies. Those have to change. Point, point blank, period. That's this whole problem we're having is redlining. Like Mr. Bowie Highland over there was able to go and do what he did, and he's still trying to do more, even though we're asking for not more. Perception had never been over there in the beginning. It should have been homes built over there. That area was zoned for houses, zoned for homes. Y'all, the city of Fort Worth, changed that without any community input. Now we are overrun with industry, and it's only getting worse. Signs are up for those trucks. Those trucks don't pay those signs any attention. They go right through, and the police pass one way, and the trucks pass one way. Uh, matter of fact, our streets out here now are becoming parking lots of these 18 wheelers. You go down here, you go down Village Creek, you go down Eastern, I guarantee you see at least five or six on parked on the street. You go up here in the neighborhoods, you see them parked on corners. You can't, it's a wonder they're not more wrecks out here, because they park right on the corner. You can't see what's coming. And the park across the school yesterday. Yeah. 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 And the police department drive right back. Right. Yeah. 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 So in summary, is anything that we're doing tonight have any um, any assistance with helping us on the eighth? Is anything that we're doing here going to help towards the eighth, August eighth? So I think that I, certainly from what I've been. I think that that policy change would make a lot of sense because that's that becomes part of the, um, the zoning. It still staff looks report. like it's redlining, though. It still looks redlining. It's still redlining. Y'all have not done enough with the redlining. How long does it take for a policy to be admitted accepted? Like is policy equal to zoning? Wait, you yeah, said there's a policy question. being put in place. How long does it take to get an actual? Is the policy the equal to zoning? In other words, will there be a moratorium on new industrial zoning for the next year while the other plan is in process? The, the, the policy is not zoning. So it's not a real enforceable yeah, policy. That's correct. It's well, an intent. It, it is intent. It's the council's intent. And Could the council not pass a moratorium? It's the zoning process and the zoning staff and the staff report of what goes to the zoning commission that actually, you know, and then on to city council with a recommendation. That's the process where that policy change would become a part staff of the Staff would recommend that between now and the 8th and you could show up at that meeting with a moratorium on new industrial zoning I, in this part of the city. Yeah. And I think that would go a long way toward showing the city's good faith for like this neighborhood. I've if you were to suspend yeah. industrial zoning while you're thinking about the 2050 yeah. plan, that at least gives them a chance to catch their breath and try to be self-defensive about what's going on here. If you leave it open the way it is with only intent, then they're going to have the same whack-a-mole problem they've been having here, and you're going to see this movement grow and grow and grow. The whole reason you're here tonight is to try to cut this, um, you know, the rose off the blue before it hits the eighth. That ain't going to happen the way things are proceeding. So I, that was actually in my email, along with all the other stuff, was put a moratorium on zoning. The city council, somebody needs to put a moratorium on rezoning in Echo Heights and probably the north side as well, along with <coughs> increasing the industrial zoning center and putting everything back. You know, it, if it was zoned agricultural a year ago, it should still be zoned agricultural. Don't try to slip in the industrial zoning, the dark blue, yeah. into across from W and Green. That should have stayed like it was. We know you can't move industry or buy industry out. You could, but you can't force industry to move. But you can decrease the zone, the industrial zoning center, and you can remove all light and heavy industrial outside of that center back to agricultural, open space, whatever. If there's no development, I specifically asked for a moratorium on rezoning in my email to you before you went on vacation. And that that has to happen because this neighborhood is just barely staying above water. 
And or I'm, maybe not above water. You're no, drowning. I can't swim. You're drowning. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to put Chief Burns on the spot because he grew up there. Y'all keep saying y'all putting jobs there. Y'all putting jobs there. It's so discriminatory. Y'all putting jobs there. Keep keeping a certain economic group in a certain place. Chief Burns grew up in Echo Heights. Chief Burns, were you shocked when you saw what they've done to the community over there? If you don't mind. Well, I'll say this. Uh, I went to WM Green. Used to walk to school, no sidewalks and all that stuff. Still no sidewalks. Um, no progress. And I, I am shocked to see all the industrial. Uh, live right there on Pegas, right behind the park. And uh, I can't believe all the industrial stuff that's going on. I mean, just, and I still have family over there. And, um, and when they started talking to me about it, and I was, T kept calling, I said, well, hey, you know, I got off work. I said, I'm going to come by and see what's going on. Um, and I know you did, you don't have to say yeah, the but, whole but, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. I just say that. I'm disappointed. Because uh, I know we can do better. And just for a small bit of history, for those who don't know, the day before JFK died, he actually came over to Echo Heights. There's a woman that stays over in the community in Echo Heights. They did have a picture of her and him came to her house. And so there's a historical marking. So I don't know if we need to put an overlay that will prevent y'all from coming and do so many different things. You know what? Echo Heights was also part of the Village Creek Battle of, Battle of Village Creek War. So Hanley had a marker. Yes. Arlington had a marker. Echo Heights, North Scott State had a marker to prevent y'all doing what y'all do. So why don't we have to do a marker like the white area? So I'm just wondering. And because I was in the rain, I saw bottles in my backyard, and I dug them up thinking it was something my kids had put there. But then I realized it was a lot of old bottles, so I just dug them up and put them in the dumpster. See, these are already the developed. And yeah. I was telling so. one of my neighbors, he was like, T, you probably should have dated those because yeah. they might have been, yeah. I was like, they were so old. They might have been That's from okay. the Civil War. So I know Arlington Lake, that area, the bridge, that area, Will Park, all that area. How come these? Areas don't have historic marking like the white areas do. Huh? No. Too right. hard. There's some identification markings. Mm -hmm. uh, we need historic markers too. And like some of the homes on Pacific Street where Chief Burns was, was built, even though President Kennedy was assassinated, they was built under his house in the field. And just one more historical hot fact. They came, the name Peridal Park was named because there was a bunch of little Peridals over there. And around that park was a bunch of black faces and homeowners and families and this. So when they started in, including all these extra industrials, guess what they did, y'all? They came and moved the little pairy dogs. They took their time and extracted about 2,000, oh, okay, over 4,000 pairy dogs. And they took them to safety. And then they started bringing in all the industrial and commercial stuff. And they just figured, so we don't be able to deal with it, but the dogs couldn't deal with it? So you're telling me that their lives was much more important than the human lives that reside in this community, that y'all would take the time, and taxpayer dollars, work time to come over and sit and wait for the little dogs to pop up or figure out how to get them to come out those holes, and extract them in those little bitty cages and take them to safety, but our lives wasn't as important as those dogs that you would take them to safety and leave us here to fend for our our health and fighting, and as Mr. McFarland said, we're trying to step up one. Did you help and understand that? No. I, I understand the story. I, I, I don't know the background. I don't know how, how that happened, why that happened, and what it is. And <coughs> so is this I, the first time you've heard this story? That. No, I've, I've heard it from you once before. That's so, all. That was some, that was some months ago, correct? Well, they, they, they used to be in the park up here. Okay. And Chief Burns okay. used to play with the prairie dogs in the park. <laughs> 75, 80 years ago, it was cost. That was an attraction. They, brought us, they would have to uh, have around Wichita Falls, around that area out there. I remember that directly because I lived in the time. And brought them down here, turned them loose up here. Then they decided, well, they struck the table over another. Well, then they wanted to do it together. They, they decided they wanted to do something else with this up here at that time. So they extracted them. And this when they moved them across. 287 that park over there. And that was back. Yeah, that's when they, they started moving over there. 
Yeah. So with that being said, they did their due diligence in saving those, those pets just to come around and say, rodents, rats. Rodent and rats. That's basically what their family line is. They're rodents. We're human. We're human. And our lives wasn't as important as a bunch of rodents. And we're still fighting for health and safety in this community till to this day, right now. We're still fighting. And y'all decide y'all want to help us opposed to print up a blind eye to what's going on. When do y'all decide, hey, we're going to go ahead and do something to implement a safer, healthier community for Echo Heights? They went through enough. And unlike white folks, we don't document our medical history. When we go to the doctor, we go to the doctor. You can give us a prescription or give us something to try to make us healthier. Oh, we go to grandma. My daughter right here, she took her hat off. She has no hair. It started all over here. And then she's not the only one. We have several other people that have the same issue. But I was told because we had no medical proof, there's no medical proof, there's nothing we can document or add to the fact that it could have been an issue as it relates to the industrial or the hazardous materials or pollution that's going over in the South, of Echo Heights, South Six area, because there's no document proof, there's nothing the city can be held accountable for. We're going to let that fly. And we're going to ask going forward. Wonderful. And, and the miscarriage, it's also, and my daughters live a few houses from Martina and they had hair loss also. Not as severe as Martina's, but my children experienced hair loss also. Mm -hmm. And then across the street from me, you have cattle corners. You have one person that had kidney failure. She eventually died of COVID, but next door to her, you have a mother and son who right now, one is needing a kidney transplant right next door. And the other is on dialysis. This stuff is not coincidence. Not at all. And then uh, you have uh, Nakia. Her mom kept saying something over there was making her sick. And she died and shortly. She died. And it was, I mean, it was, it was on the news that this area here has the largest mortality rate. The life expectancy is very short. So I'm, right. I guess what we're saying right. is just in this area, and it kind of strange that all these people, and none of us are related. I met her when I moved in in 94. She was already there. And so um, he was already in the community. What I'm trying to say is this is not by just chance that everyone is having issues. And keep in mind, now we have our children's children who might experience the same situation. Now, the Bible says to leave a wealth for your children's children inheritance. What are we leaving for them to inherit? Bad health, bad pollution, all types of chemicals. I don't think that's a good thing that we want to live. Can you please? Um, on, on the other side, I'm going to ask. Hey, Tina. Would you be willing at this moment to do something that will change what we're asking? I sent you a seven-page request and, and um, questioning of what we would like to see different. Hey, Tina. Mr. Bowie at the meeting uh, the other day said that they did soil testing on his property. Why did the city not do soil testing at the park? within the community. Why did y'all have to go to his property? The guy y'all convinced to put four zoning deals on one on one application. What's up with that? Something's up with that. I'm kind of concerned here that there's uh, favoritism and stuff. He's a white dude. Look at all those black people that live over there. He's a white dude that don't live there. So what's the what's the favoritism going on with him over us black and brown people who live there? Don't stare at me. I'm on an answer. You talk about the zoning application. We've done that many times on many applications. Why so did y'all do that? Where there's yeah, but y'all told y'all told the coalition that y'all don't do things like that. There's separate test. applications. We wouldn't do separate applications if it's a different area. We would just have one application for numerous addresses. So in this case, you wouldn't have to sit in the council hearing for five different cases. You would have one case with all the different addresses, and we've done that before in all areas of the city. But that is so stupid, because this area is fighting in industrialization, and y'all know that. It's like y'all trying to push it through. That, that's one of the problems that we are having with y'all. That is stupid. Okay, let's Y'all just put that in the uh, I want to, I want to. Going through um, the standard process where y'all have a say, it's the most democratic form of government where we have two public hearings. These are not even close. They're on different streets. This is four different streets. Four different streets.
take it to where he lives. He said he lives in an industrial area. Let him take it to where he lives. They love it. This is going back to council, so y'all have definitely have to say in this. I'm just saying how y'all conduct stuff in black and brown neighborhoods. He's a white dude coming to put industrial in a black and brown community that don't want no more. Y'all know this. So let, let's go back to um, the request, the moratorium. So we have the city manager here, David yeah. Cook. Yeah. We have an assistant city manager here, Dana Burtoff. I don't see the attorney. Um, okay. Um, Johnson. So let, let's talk about that moratorium because this has been going on for decades. We do need this to stop a pause and we need to be able to regroup, preferably with the city. There needs to be a dialogue. There needs to be education in the community about processes, um, as you can see. But this is real. Folks are suffering. Right here at Eugene McCray, you got an industrial site right next to it. And they have just been doing whatever they want, piling dirt. And we're now, all against that. That, uh, right we fought against yeah, you got a fueling station next to a senior citizen home. Now, if you have an explosion, it's going to be some people who are going to die. And so let's get in front of this. Let's, let's work with the city. Um, let's work through this. And it needs to be a dialogue, but we need to stop the industrial from happening. Let's put a pause. So let's talk about that moratorium. That's an actionable step. And let's talk about can that be done. So what I, I agree with that. What I think I know, what we need to talk about our law department, is that the moratorium under state law can last anywhere from 90 to 120 days. And that's the limitation on how long a moratorium can be in effect. That won't get us through the 2050 comprehensive plan adoption. So my sense is that what we need to do is commit as staff working with you know the development services department to say that if a request comes in for an, an industrial zoning change that we will recommend denial or we will you know indicate that while it may be consistent with the comprehensive plan you know it's not compatible right with the, the community so that's something that we can talk about from a policy perspective so that if it goes to zoning commission they've got that information and it's not just Consistency with the comprehensive plan driving that. that is it state but it's law the, that prevents you from going over 120 days? That's my understanding. Yes. Could you that's cite why, that, please? Well, yeah, I'm not the attorney, so that's why they're they're checking into it for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I recall from other moratorium discussions. Is so that, the only way to there's no formal process. It's just if a zoning change comes in, a zoning request change comes in, mm -hmm. the city would recommend to the zoning commission yeah. to deny it. Correct. But there's Correct. no ordinance uh, there's nothing like that can be passed by city council to actually put a more so you could do a moratorium i was just saying right. it would just be limited in its time frame right. so that what you need to do in that time frame you know is have that plan yeah. of what you're going to do differently going forward so it just would i'm assuming take longer to work through each property that you all have mentioned because there's a lot of them right that are that are designated industrial or zoned industrial what about federal mm -hmm. If you go state, it's only limited, right? But what if you go federal? Is there something you can do federal, or you can't? Can you reapply for the moratorium to keep on going? That's like what. Yeah, that's what zoning? we're trying to find out. Because you're right. If there was a way to do it, do it again. Y'all sure. can't reapply for the moratorium. So zoning is governed by the state. So that is a state um, authority, if you will, not federal authority. So, so the states have the zoning authority. So the, the, and the federal government has authority. no authority. Not with regard to zoning. No, sir. But um, the other piece to mention is that I think we could um, have the you know have that conversation be part of what we bring to council right for the August briefing, so that it's not just this policy statement, but it's also the practice of what staff's going to do. So we would rely on the staff. And Eric, I sent this in an email. You have it. CC the mayor. That Echo Heights. The advocacy that he, this organization, this loose organization, especially, and then Echo Heights Stump Six Environmental Coalition is asking for a moratorium on any rezoning request in Echo in, the, in this city. Yeah, this ac actually, it's a full footprint. It, it's not just Echo Heights; it's going yeah, north. It that's why I mentioned north side. Right. 
It's in the boundary. So there is a map, and so it includes Village Creek. It includes parts of Stop 6. Um, so folks, again, they're suffering, and it's well documented. So action is needed. There are some best practices out there. City of Austin, um, back in the 90s, did an overlay in a community that was suffering from in industrial encroachment. Fort Worth can look, some of you guys already know about these things, so, but you can read this, you can look at the best practices. You don't have to recreate the wheel. Just look at what's happening in other places. <laughs> but it, it is serious. You know, these, these are not exaggerations. Um, our family home is in Village Creek. Wilbarger is a mess with the 18-wheelers. They are just barreling down. I left, and Village Creek is wedged between Wilbarger and the freeway. Mm -hmm. So you've got to use Wilbarger. And sometimes you see these 18-wheelers, they are just coming. And we have heard that there are children who are running across Wilbarger. They live on the other side of Wilbarger, running across Wilbarger to get to this community center with an 18-wheeler coming. So this is real. Somebody is going to get hurt. Somebody is going to get killed. Now, I, and I have a, a problem with industry saying that y'all are bringing jobs in this area. It sounds good. And to me, it's more or less outsourcing our income, if you understand what I mean. Is that if you bring buildings here and say that they're jobs, I'm a zero, one of the Xerox twins probably the most noted, the most known person in this room. Mm -hmm. I am, no, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying that is to say I know a lot of people as well. Mm -hmm. And I know of no one who, who work in these industries. That's right. That's right. So you say that you bring That's these right. jobs in here for us, but they're not. Mm -hmm. And we know and understand that they're not going to be for us. Mm -hmm. So again, we are, you're taking all of our land, taking all our resources. We can't make a living, and plus, you're killing us at the same time. Are you serious? So yes, we need to put a stop to it. We need to stop it, put a halt to it, and then from there we can pick up and be more, be more concerned about our environment, our living, and our lifestyle. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. You have an unhealthy concentration of truck terminals in this area. And that produces particulate matter. It's very harmful. When it one breathes it in, it gets into your lungs, it gets into your blood. It kills you. It's very harmful. And the city has permitted this to happen. You permitted all these truck terminals in this neighborhood. Now you could at least measure the air quality and do something to make the people who are emitting all that crap, mm -hmm. pardon me, into the air be more responsible about how they run their trucks. Because they don't have a license to kill. You may have given them a license to be aggregated in truly toxic numbers, but code enforcement could do something. And you could measure the dangers that you inflict on the people who live here and then help them get TSEC and EPA and others to come clean up the mess that you allowed to be created. And we ask for that because that's not an unfair request. Quit killing us. Thank you. One of the other things is I, I, as I came in, I came in late. And they kept referring to policy is intent. Mm -hmm. Policy is intent. Policy is intent. I get that. The moratorium, if 90 days, 120 days, shows intent also. If we request the moratorium, and that's showing an intent that to the zoning committee, to the community, we're actually going to pay attention to a little bit. Uh, and so if this policy is showing intent, then why couldn't the moratorium from the city also show it to. Food for thought. One other thing. I don't know if y'all recall last time, just before we closed out at the city council, uh, when Mr. Bowie had actually made his um, offer or statement to city council about getting those properties, and Mayor Parker and um, 
Ms. Beck both made the statement in support of him and said that they were a company that we needed to work with and that bringing them into the community would be a great thing. We would be so happy to have them in our community. Sounds like a small little favoritism. I mean, it's recorded, so we play it back. But that's what she said. I don't know if anyone else recalled that, but that is what she said. Now, I don't know Mr. Bowie personally, but I'm going to make a plea to Mr. Bowie to, to take the time to look around at what's going on in the community. Um, there's a lot of problems and issues being held under our school, things like that. I'm not sure what you're planning on putting on the park because normally you submit an application to do things. They ask you what's your plan and purpose for this property. Well, on his application, it wasn't there. We need to request it or ask of him what he'd be utilizing the property for. Y'all just said, oh, because well, he would be a great asset to the area. He wasn't requested to put anything down. Does that sound right? Mr. Biden? Oh, typically there's something identified there. Yeah. yeah. That's it's I, not, it's not yes, a mandated please, please requirement please. necessarily. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm Bowie Holland uh, here with Empire Holdings. And uh, I just want to acknowledge everything that's been said. Um, our concerns match about 90% of the concerns uh, here. I spend the majority of my week uh, in the Sun Valley Property Improvement District there. In, Southeast Quadrant and now. Um, pollution is legal. Uh, we are not looking to pollute. Um, we, before we purchase property, we do phase one and phase two investigations. We soil test all of our properties. We want to be doubly sure before we purchase a property or after a tenant moves out that the pollution has not occurred. Um, it, it's something that concerns us. It should, it should, occur, it should concern you all. Um, so I, I just really want to acknowledge that. Um, we are not looking to pollute our own properties or any surrounding properties. So, um, the trucking companies, they're the bane of our existence. They're tearing up our roads. Uh, we've strongly encouraged them to join the property improvement district. And they're they're not very good neighbors, frankly. You know, they, they are uh, utilizing the roads um, and, and not, not being part of the community. Uh, as far as WM Green, I, I think the idea of putting a big box distribution center across the W Green was a terrible idea. Um, we would fully support putting no through truck signs. Uh, we're looking at, at potentially uh, a license plate camera to document any trucks that are going past the elementary school. I, I agree with what you said about stopping a CDL class vehicle. They, they, they can't stop anything going there. Uh, right now with all the, the construction, there's a lot of cut through traffic in the middle of the night yep. uh, as, as they close roads. Uh, it's, it's an absolute problem. Um, I would just like to tell you a little bit about what we're proposing. Uh, we do have four lots They're between half acre and three quarters an acre. There will <coughs> be number one, a parking lot. Uh, it will be across the, the street from the, the church. It's a parking lot for an office building uh, for overflow parking. And uh, additionally, we have three, what I would, the city would call light industrial buildings. We call them flex buildings. Uh, they're a large component of office and with a storage component anywhere between 80, 20, 30, 70. They're going to be between 8,400 and 9,200 square feet. Uh, again, on a half acre, three quarter acre lot, there's no way a tractor trailer can fit on any of those. There'll be no docks. Uh, further, again, getting back to the concerns you folks have, uh, we have deed restrictions that um, even under light industrial, there's a lot of uses we don't like uh, that we find um, you know, have the potential to unintentionally or intentionally to pollute. So we have reported deer restrictions on over 100 lots in Sun Valley, and uh, that restricts against 90 plus uses. And I would welcome this group to submit additional uses, especially you folks from the Sierra Club or Downwinders at Risk. If, if there's uses we haven't thought of that have potential to put particulate matter in the air. Can we have a list of those as well? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Mr. Bowie, do you own any other properties over in the Echo Heights area? You just said 100 lots. Um, could, could perchance, could one of you all point to, to like the Sun Valley Property Permit District as it relates to Echo Heights? Um, we're not here. We don't want any more investment. So, so you're talking just about this area? Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. Mr. Bully, you have taken blocks. the time to actually get out and identify the, the area that we're actually complaining about as it relates to you coming over to put your company over there. You haven't taken the time to do your due diligence and go around as it relates to Sun Valley area and all that? 
Or could you clarify that question? I'm sorry. So you asked him to identify yes. uh, oh, sure. the valley area. Mm -hmm. So my question to you was, have you not taken the time to actually drive through the community, Certainly. get over the area, and identify how close or how far it is as it relates to what you're trying to put in your property? Absolutely. Um, I, I think the nearest is about 3,000 feet away from the nearest single family home. Uh, the closest to Echo Heights is, is going to be on David Strickland. And I think that's around four or five hundred feet uh, to the uh, east of David, uh, the Debian Green, uh, at the corner of David Strip and Marie Jones. So you are aware that there are houses that are actually also next to commercial companies over in the area that you are looking at. He, he's There's trying, he's trying to buy those ten. You said, you sure. said 3,000 feet about away. Yes, but there's actually houses that might be a business right here and then there's a residence right here as well. That, that's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Sun Valley property is about 96% industrial. There are a few remaining, I think on that exhibit, uh, we show there are a few remaining B zone lots. Um, the approximation of Sun Valley Pit, or the Sun Valley Pit was the Weisenberger City Edition. It was, it was platted in 1999, I think. Uh, really, about the same time Echo Heights was platted. Uh, Echo Heights was much more successful as a neighborhood uh, than the, the Weisenberger City Edition. Uh, it, there were a few houses built there. Um, uh, but it, uh, uh, I'm told the developer ran into some trouble, and the few houses that were built were the only ones built past about 1960. Uh, then when the highway came in, uh, that's when you did have the first industrial uses to start to show. What are those four lots old right now? Uh, th there's a number of vacant lots that are still zone residential, or residential, and there's, I think, between four and six actual residential uses uh, that are on these zone lots. And to be crystal clear, we're not looking to, to bother those folks. We, we love them. They come to our crime watches. Uh, they're, they're good folks. Um, but I, I think city planning would tell you it, it, it's going to be tough to build a house when it's surrounded on all four sides by, by existing industrial uses. So as it um, relates to light industrial, yes. tell us what that entails. What is light industrial to you? Sure. Um, I'd say we're, we're a niche player in light industrial. Uh, it can include up to big box industrial like this glass company. Um, we are not that developer. We, we do small scale industrial. So um, how do we know that as you progress throughout the future that you want to eventually add any of those things on your property as time permits? Great question. I mean, indeed, restrictions can be changed at any time. That, through the deed restrictions, because we have that concern if, if we were to ever sell to a neighbor uh, what they may choose to do, which is allowed under the industrial, uh, which, which includes some uses that, that we don't agree with. Uh, that had the potential to uh, operate loud noises, put any particulate into the air, um, heavy manufacturing, anything like that. Uh, we don't want those uses either. Uh, example companies, we have a number of engineering firms, a number of service firms, aerospace firms. Um, I, I heard you loud and clear about the jobs. Um, our, our latest economic development surveys said the salaries are averaging about $60,000. Uh, there's some well into the six figures. Um, we've been talking to Councilmember Martinez about potentially hosting a job fair. Um, I think the city and designating this industrial growth center is because they see a high jobs potential for the area, 10,000 per square mile. Um, certainly that's been reflected in our, our surveys. Uh, over a thousand jobs created that we could document uh, since uh, 2013. So a thousand over 10 years for a little eight or nine block area is, is quite a few jobs. So you are aware how Echo Heights got its name? Yes. And so will you be also adding any buffers or anything that's noticed throughout there? Because I think of the echo in there? Buffers are a great idea. Um, I know we uh, present an exhibit to your office. Um, and again, the, some of it is, is I believe, already uh, under consideration. Creating so a buffer. Of it. Oh, okay. Uh, so, some of the. I appreciate the presentation. Absolutely. So, Mr. Bowie, um, as you may see, conversation that you've given us, it basically seems like the city has already accepted your proposal. Mm -hmm. It seems oh, like you yeah, have everything I'd, I'd lined say. out. So, just as you and our conversation, you have everything identified of what you need to do, what you will do, and what you're planning on doing. So, it seems like it's already pretty much agreed that y'all are going to allow his. But my uh, understanding is, uh, you see, that's the problem you have. We're having is because. When he said, oh, you can't get no homes given by new men, that was supposed to be homes. 
before the city industrializes. That's the problem. You have white guys like him coming in, making comments like that. Never lived in the community. Don't know anything about the community. It's not having any compassion for the community. He's looking at his bottom dollar, his bottom line. And that's the problem. We ask for no more industrialization. And here you are trying to push it. And it seems like you have the uh, help of the city. They've been helping you out quite a bit. They don't care nothing about us black and brown people. They've made that very clear with their redlining. This is still redlining. This is still, your deed restrictions can be overturned at any time. You know, you know it's happening. And that will make the entire area industrial. And those places shouldn't be there in the first place. That should be homes there. The city did that, not the community. And you just don't understand because you don't live there. Take it to your community. I'm not familiar with the, the zoning, but, but the predominance of the industrial was, was if developed from making should make it, You should make yourself familiar with it. Go do your research. Make yourself familiar with it. I have studied uh, quite in depth the, the historical photographs going back to about 1942 and, and what was developed predominantly was vacant lots being developed, uh, that there was never a home there. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the zoning records. Uh, I don't know that those are publicly available going back that far. Uh, but I would like to tell you that. Because once you rezone it, you can sell it the next day and anybody can come in and then you have a whole area industrialized. Well, that's the problem. I, I, would, I would say uh, we We're already sick over there. We don't need any more. We want what's there out. That's one of our requests is to move what's there out. And y'all, look at, look at Eric, y'all. Look at him. Look at that look on his face. To, to that end, uh, I spend the predominance of my week here in Sun Valley. Uh, so if there is any pollution, I would certainly like to know about it. Um, we, we Again, we test all of the Sun Valley property. The government already said it's the problem. The government already said for work has a problem. This area is by 287, 820, and 20, over 200 industrial industries there already. People over there are sick and dying, and you still don't realize that there's a the problem there. Because they test the soil on your property, even though the city told us they don't do air To be clear, uh, no, 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 no. The city did not te come test our soil. We, we paid to test our own soil. Um, we, we want to be very clear about that. The city is not coming and testing our soil. <laughs> I would, I'd be happy to give you the laboratory we use and, and the soils that, that our insurance companies have recommended the test. Because my backyard, my backyard is polluted. I've done, we've done some air samples in my backyard. My backyard is polluted. My family has suffered. My pets have suffered. So, yeah, I'm offended. I'm offended with you. I'm offended with the city that's here. Y'all must think we're ignorant. The point, is, it's industri the point is, it's still industrial. Mm -hmm. yeah. They want it zoned back to, they want it zoned either open space, agriculture, residential, and mm -hmm. No more. It doesn't matter if it's light or heavy industrial. It's still industrial. And, and I would be so they don't want it. fully they don't supportive. Want it. They don't I, want I, it. I can't speak. <laughs> it, but uh, creating a buffer. Um, I know so we talked you about. That's the soil all you the want. The buffer doesn't matter. matter. We don't want it. Yeah. The community does not want it. That should have been homes there. The city went behind the community's back and industrialized. And that's that is the worst kind of red line. And like I said, that's like during the civil rights movement when they were attacking black people and stuff. That's just what y'all did. Y'all did it a different way. Y'all did it with industry to kill us and make us sick. Yeah, and like to make us sick. Across, across the street right there, because this is all the agricultural out here. Nobody heard about that rezoning all of a sudden. You get it just these shows truck, up. You get these trucking places. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and, and readers down there. Uh, yeah, I say nobody knew about it. Yeah, somebody knew about it. They told Ernest Thomas, because he owns several properties around here. They told Dovey Stratus, who owns the end of Arlington, the end of the Wilbur, and he's got 13 acres down there. They told Dovey Stratus. 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 Those were the heavy land owners. Let me ask y'all, it seems like we've gotten out of the course of what they can do. Right. And so we haven't even got a chance to view the map, mark the map, or even speak about the map, so let's see if you're okay with that, uh, in the 722, and we do want the city to show us something, or at least hear what we have to say as it relates to the map, so as anyone has seen, there are maps on the table with little things on it. Uh, I'll let Mr. Eric go ahead and speak, speak for one before you do. 
Oh, so I just wanted to yeah, get yeah. a sense of it from everybody here, if you're if you okay with that, to look at the map, or if you'd rather focus on the moratorium question, oh, to get back on that. But I do feel like there's good information here. It's up to y'all how you want to see this. Have to read the whole thing. Whatever y'all, you and Matisse and Jane and uh, Twin, y'all decide. Yeah, and it's, it's other people in the neighborhood who are not necessarily part of the structure of Echo Heights. So, the maps are on the table. Yeah, I, I think, you know, since all this has been brought up, you know, let's go through this exercise. But also, there are a couple of actions that we need follow up, a dialogue with the city that is this moratorium. And then it was a request to measure air quality. So those are two action items that have been put out. But let's go through this exercise. Let's not let this opportunity yeah, pass us by. Let's go through this exercise and then we can talk it. Okay. Yes, yeah, so another request to add, and I know you guys have everyone e emails. So instead of just the Echo Heights group, is there a way that you can send that out to everyone that showed up tonight? Yeah, that's a sign so in the sign in sheet with the email list. So adding to that, yeah. um, the demographics. So if these industrial businesses are hiring, I know. Who are they hiring? Yeah, who are they hiring? Where are they coming from? Is there a way the city can get that information? Whether whether through the chamber or through yeah. any other entity, I think that'll be one to just show. Is it actually people from the community being hired? And how many or are they trucks are out? in the community? Can uh, they do a audit of trucks that's here? How many trucks are here? We need an audit of that because there's, there's thousands of trucks here. Is <coughs> the yeah. chamber yeah. interested in purchasing the property over here as well? Well, I don't know that's that's true. But so, so I think the demographics would be good information if we can get from the city. The second thing would be if there is a, so I know we're talking about the pollution and so OSHA should be involved with businesses and tracking their MSDS sheets and tracking kind of how they're doing things. So is the city involved with OSHA and getting OSHA involved with these industrial businesses to go and do reports? Because really that's an OSHA thing to where they can go and check and find out um, the safety and the pollution of each business. I think that that could be something the city could assist with doing. So that's not a new statement. We actually mentioned that. Uh, I'm just saying, if we can yeah. find. So again, how many times has the city? No, no, no. As far as OSHA going out and verifying right. if they're up the code and they're validating what they're supposed to, if they are <laughs> identifying if they're ha if they do have hazardous materials or on their property, and if so, what they are. If they're up the code, if, I mean, some I'm like kind of like restaurants where you have an A and F in the windows. Exactly. Is that what you're speaking of? Well, OSHA, what should, OSHA should just come out and do reports, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they come out and they actually, it's on job sites, right? They actually test the safety and quality of the job site. So they do the same thing for businesses that are controlling and have hazardous materials. They yeah. have a standard. And, and, and the whole point about that is that they don't even just not regulate. The builders don't even have their names on the building. Right. So, exactly. so I think if the we don't, they, we can't even identify not, sure. what this business is. Unbelievable. So I think the city could help with that. And then also, I don't know who all has a copy of um, the 2023 plan. I think that would be good. Well, I'm saying if we can just email it instead of people having to go find it, right? That's a typical one. Yeah, we can. Everybody who's signed up on your email address, right. so I'm asking, can we can kick out links and just send out the 2023 plan and then also send out the past. So if we're looking to do tonight a 20 year plan, I'm sure there was a 20 year plan 20 years ago. What did that plan look like? So we get a copy and see what actually has changed, right? Because again, what we don't want to do is do this just to do this and have community doing exercises and meeting and whatever they put down or we put down, it's the same issue 20 years from now. Again, I grew up, I have family that live in Echo Heights, Stop 6, Eastwood. Again, I'm a kid from Fort Worth, right? I still have family that live over here, right? And so I'm saying, so the community looks the same, feels the same for me. Right, being a, being a resident of Southeast, East Fort Worth, what I see is very much the same, right? I'm a kid that grew up with asthma. So I understand the concerns, I get the concerns, very much so. So I'm, what I'm asking for the city to do is provide that documentation, that information, so at least we can, those of us who may not have been in, in the emails from Echo Heights, um, just provide that information to the community instead of us having to go to the website to find it, look for it, find the link, uh, just share it, right? And so I think those things can help move move a little bit forward. 
Uh, the memorandum, I like that suggestion. If it is 120 days, is there a way to kind of, you know, re-up or add it again for another 120? Or is what can we do? Because there are ways in which city, state, that you can kind of go, go and, again, think outside the box. Because right now we're so in the box right now, and it seems like the city is trying to protect certain things. Um, we just got to open it up. Right, we've seen it happen in Joplin over in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Right, we've seen it ha happen with Shingle Mountain in Dallas. So, again, we're, we're experiencing and been experiencing this for my lifetime, and I'm 40. Right, <coughs> now I know what's happened before that. So, I'm saying we have to do something, and I'm saying we collectively. And so, I'm saying I'm asking the city if y'all can provide that information, provide that data, so we can stop having the data conversation and then actually get demographics, get the information. And again, a soils test, and I understand, I'm pretty sure the city didn't do your soils test. They did not. But there, are, there's a black company that's over in Sun Valley that can come do soil tests. If the city didn't, won't mind, let's support a black business. Mm -hmm. He can come out and do soils tests, right? We can also get people to do air quality tests. So I said, there are things we can do right now that's not going to cost a million bucks, a couple, a couple thousand dollars to do a soil test. Well, I'm just saying, so I'm saying stuff that we can do, and if you don't mind, right, if, if Miss T, you're saying, hey, come do a soil test Please, in my backyard. I would encourage that. Absolutely. Well, I'm and saying, would you mind sponsoring that, right? Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. What's going on? Oh, no. And I'll say something with that comment. Yeah. You are here for profit. Not just you, but the corporations are here for profit. And I heard a comment that I just want to highlight. I heard this, we're not going to grow, but we're definitely going to keep it this way. And I'm going to push back against that one. Make it less. Find a way. I, they live here. Like, you're not going to have to deal with this. It's going to be my kids and the kids of my kids. So what I'm trying to say here is, not only should you, because you said if y'all could provide, you're, you will provide the information. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Sure, we will do that. Great. And let's make sure it's also in Spanish, because I've noticed that often in these kind of meetings, we're missing some voices, you know? Let's make sure the working people, right, that we're going to ask, they can also have a say beyond this time. Once again, thank you. You don't have to apologize for what you're doing. All I'm trying to say is, you said something about pollution is legal. It shouldn't be. No, no. And I'm not, no, I, I heard you. Yeah. Pollution is legal, you said. So we're not trying to, but all I'm trying to say to you is this. This is the air we breathe. How much money, okay. how much money is enough money for you to make compared to the air that I get to breathe, the air that we all get to share? Did you mean to say legal? No. Did you mean to say illegal? Because it sounded like legal. I was like, hold on. Not against the law. Um, and on the air monitoring, uh, the, the, uh, the Sun Valley Property Improvement District wrote a letter supporting Forest EPA grant to find money from additional EPA Maryland. If there's a way to do private air monitoring, we're looking into that. We're fully supportive of if there's a pollution there, let's find it. Let's identify who's generating it, shut them down, remediate. We, we, we are concerned about this too. Our employees work here. Uh, I spend the majority of my week there. I'm breathing the same air as you folks. Um, I, I think the pollution concern is absolutely as merit and let, let's find it together. Okay, let's Look, this is a great process y'all showed up with tonight, but you have you want to condense two hours worth of, worth of work into 20 minutes and stop it. It's not, and if it does, it'll be a shitty version. We don't want that. This, and, it, and it's kind of duplicitous to do this when there's so many outstanding issues unresolved as far as the community is concerned. They're not ready to take this step to say, here's how we would like it for the next 20 or 30 years when you're still dealing with stuff that's happened the last 20 years. So here's my suggestion for the last 20 minutes. If somebody could take the drawing, the magic marker up there and just say for one thing that we all agree on, we should have a perhaps try a 120 day moratorium. So Jim, this, this, this table's already done. This table's already put stuff on the map and written up what we want to I just want to say, don't let this process with the neighborhood drop at this meeting. There should be continuing dialogue to go into exactly. August 8th with a number of suggestions to say, you know what, we heard what feedback the community had here, and here are our suggestions for things we hadn't thought of before that night. One, two, three. I heard some good things about truck monitoring, truck photography, so on. There's no reason why you can't do that. There's no reason why you can't show up on August 8th with a number of suggestions from this neighborhood and say, we now want to act in good faith, because in case you couldn't tell, you have zero, you have negative credibility over here. You have less than zero credibility. 
And I have never seen a city staff treat a neighborhood so disrespectfully as this city staff did with that EPA grant. That is just outrageous. And so we're going to be over here for a long time until we get this result. For, for y'all, not to even talk about environmental justice in these plans is also outrageous. So there's another talking point you can include on the agenda. By the way, we need to start using this language to match our intent and to match our policy. Right? So doing the math slow, that's fine. They already know, everybody knows what, the, everybody that grew up here, like the chief, knows exactly what they want to see, know what, knows what they love, knows what they hate. You've heard an hour of that tonight. That's no mystery. The problem is how do you advance this cause to the eighth? What do we get new on the eighth that we weren't going to get before? What is the neighborhood going to get out of it that they were not going to get before you had this exchange tonight? Show some freaking good faith and put some investment into making concessions that this neighborhood wants you to make. They are not even big concessions. But they are concessions that show you are going the right way. Unless you do that, this is only going to get worse. And I think you already suspect that this is a problem Fort Worth has never dealt with before. And it will turn into a freaking sheep amount. So do something tonight to continue this process on. If we can't get through this whole thing tonight, schedule a meeting with these folks. They're represented by attorneys. They can, they can negotiate with y'all and show up on the 8th with something that shows you have a more serious attitude about this problem. Well, and, and we should owe you feedback before the 8th yeah. Yeah. so you have a chance to react to it. And That's why I wanted this to happen right after the meeting at WM Green. But <laughs> we, got put up, we got pushed off oh. until now, oh. until, two weeks before the, until two weeks before the August 8th. So August 8th is a deadline, but that should actually be pushed off even farther before any of these changes can happen. Because we need additional input, like everyone's saying. We've, we've aired our, they've aired their complaints, we've all aired our complaints, but two weeks is not enough time to make the substantial changes that need to be made. But yeah, we can put dots on a map. We know we want the blue area to shrink. You know we want the purple to go away if it's undeveloped and move back to recreational industrial, you know, or open space or whatever. We, we want moratorium on, on uh, zoning requests. We want air monitoring stations. Shrink the industrial growth center. Change all undeveloped industrial zoning back to, or back to some un, 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 un industrial. That's essentially I just want, that. I just want to be careful with that because if, if you, I don't want to create a situation where I'm encouraging residential to come in in between existing industrial because then I've heard right, not existing industrial. Problem yeah, that's not how that we have. So I just want yeah. to be real thoughtful about that. And I will, I will know what he said. He wants to put a parking lot on a piece of open, I don't know what's there now, grass or gravel or what, but every time you add a building, a 50,000 square foot building or pavement, you're adding to the urban heat island effect. It's already hotter over here than it is in West Fort Worth because there's so 119 degrees in my bed. Yeah, because there's so much pavement and buildings, <coughs> here, building tops, that creates an industrial that creates a what did yeah. I say? Yeah, urban heat island. Urban heat island, island effect. Yeah. And they have to run their air conditioners longer. There's it's no hotter, 119 there. degrees. There's no trees. That's not there. that's not safe. I, I would just say that so. uh, what you're describing is absolutely true on urban heat islands oh. and uh, urban forestry okay. ordinance. Um, uh, we exceed that with, with our tree cleaning and our canopy coverage because we would like to, to counteract that as much as we can. And at least all of our new developments, um, we talked about the internal combustion engine and the particulate matter in here. Uh, we're installing EV charging infrastructure into all the parking areas uh, as we get rid of the internal combustion engine and convert to EVs. Uh, these properties will be ready. Uh, so we are trying to do what we can. Uh, to mitigate any, any of those impacts. Uh, so, so you sound like you already approved. Well, like you, don't you, already own approved. All, you don't own all the land. That's you don't what own it sounds all. like to me, like you've already been. Somebody <laughs> told you you already So, approved. Mr. Bowie, uh, previously when I was talking about the Leon Capital Group, they literally came over and offered us to buy us for $150,000. Oh, wow. And then they offered to give a um, some money to WM Green, it was going to be a hundred thousand. I'm a uh, hundred thousand dollars as a um, what's what I'm looking for? A scholarship. A if we approve and allow them to put their trucking company there, 
And so I heard Mr. Williams asked you a minute ago, would you be willing to fund? So if you don't get yours approved, are you, prior to you applying, are you willing to invest into the community that you say you still like, whether you get the, the approval or not? Yeah, he have a hundred lots, team, and he's not investing yet. Oh, I, I think it's important uh, that we be good neighbors and, and having a strong echo. If you have a hundred lots, you have to invest. I'm yet. sorry, is that a yes or no? We will continue to invest to be, be a good neighbor. Uh, when we I'm, I'm sorry, to the question, is that a yes or a no? Yes, we're willing to purchase or invest into that that he asked you, or no, we're not? I, I didn't hear the question, I'm sorry. Give it to him again, Dante. Well, it's on your lots or kind of vacant lots in the community to be able to see kind of where, so again, sure. obviously your business, you have a bottom line, but then as a good investment, good faith effort, and you are concerned with, you know, the status and things that's going on with your community, would you be willing to kind of go to your lots if it's 100 Well, he's lots. already done his lots. Yes. Well, you've you done the four, right? Or have you done all of them? No, we've done the You've done all of them. Yes. Okay. And so if there are, well, maybe, and, and I don't know, it's maybe crossing certain city boundary lines, but if the city would allow to kind of test vacant lots or other owners would test their lots, I think that's something that can show good protection from businesses to yes. the community that we're willing to play our part in. We signed a letter to Board of Environmental and then we got two questions over here. 100%. <coughs> and they the test the air, uh, air, water, soil. Uh, we're all for testing. The solution we want to find it. If I could write a check to have our backyard tested, uh, I, I, I fear it's not that simple. Let me, let me ask you have 100 lots. So let me sure have some of those lots that have a meeting over here, too, right? You have 100 lots over there, so come on now. Which, 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 come on now, because I know Cody said that 90 something of them didn't have uh, certificate occupancies at W. Greenlee. Okay, so yeah, 90 something of them would say some type of violation, and then that was more. So you own 100 lots over there, so you own some of those that were in violation. So come on with it now, come on, still be kind of time is right there's a question here okay so my question the next request is truck routes okay these areas have too many streets designated truck routes and when you look across the city you're going to see let's take Ridgely off of Camp Bowie there's not a truck route we've got truck routes that's why these 18 wheelers are going up and down these streets and when you look at the land uses on both sides, they're mostly residential. Let's take Wilbarger, two churches, a daycare, a community park, a community center. But we deal with the 18 wheelers. So the request is let us look at the truck routes. You know, we need to de designate some of these truck routes on these arterial neighborhood streets. I'll address the, this issue on truck routes. I'm not sure. Yes, I did. I'm not sure what the designated truck routes are, but they should be intended really for them to get to and from the interstate, not to be using it as a cut through. But at the same time, if there are facilities where they're going to drop off goods or pick up goods, they have the right to use those roads to get to those facilities and then back out. But they shouldn't be using neighborhoods as cut through. So what it, sounds, what it sounds like here is a couple of things that could be going on. It sounds like there are, are industrial facilities that have been built uh, in and around residential areas. And one of the things that we'll have to look at is are they using these these neighborhoods for cut throughs or are they going directly to their drop off points or pick up points and then back to a designated truck route that's taking them to the interstate so they're getting out of the community. So, so we will. I'm not asking a question. I'm saying that that's what we'll have to evaluate and we're willing to work with the community as we do that to look at those things. I'm just explaining the things that we have to look at related to that. So Tahoe runs north and south. Paco, I mean, uh, Hillside runs north and south, but on the corner of David Strickland 
I'm sorry, on the corner of Parker Henderson, there's three, three waste companies there. So they go down south, they turn on Pecos, they come up Tahoe, or they'll come up Hillside or Eastover. Those are residents and resident areas. There's no companies on those streets for them to actually divert and come down those areas. However, uh, they're supposed to go in and turn around and come back up to, I think, Martin, and they'll then go down to catch the freeway. But of course, you know, the freeway there is kind of in construction. So they can still go across the bridge that the city has built for them. That nice, pretty bridge in front of W. Uh, uh, Perry Off Park. They go across that bridge and then go on to the north and catch the freeway right there. But instead, they're going down Tahoe, Eastover, Hillside, Pecos, and all those short streets. Uh, again, there's 752 houses over in the Echo Heights area. And so they're going by these houses. Uh, and some of them are dropping trash as they go. But these are waste trucks that are coming down the street and, and they're dropping. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's all you see. The waste trucks, the waste trucks and trash is just flying out. And you see it on 287. Um, but anyway, um, is somebody recording all the requests? Yes. Okay. And your question, Mr. Yes. Corey. Okay. Sorry, to, to that, Reverend, I know it's like, um, is it possible for some of the PD cameras to help monitor those? Kind of oh, we got video. You we know, got no, there's there overhead cameras you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, and also having PD assist with. In in my other the other locations, cities where I work, speed and overhead cameras are legal. I don't know about the overhead cameras here in Texas, but I know speed cameras and red light cameras for outlaw. Do you know if overhead cameras are legal? No, we'll, we'll, so we'll, we'll find out if they're legal. 100 cameras across the city. A lot of them station in yeah. South Six, Eastwood, Echo Heights. Mm -hmm. so the said, state we doesn't allow those to be used for monitoring traffic violations, is what he's saying. Yeah. Well, Are you talking about the, the block cameras used. that read the license plate? No, I'm no. talking about cameras that they use where there's a violation of the truck right. one goes they, they track. No, this is completely different. They're okay. set up for high crime areas. Right? Yeah. So those cameras are set up in high crime areas to yeah. track crime yeah. that and has been committed readers, in those areas. The license readers? No. I don't know. No. These are specific <laughs> for you know, cameras. You were talking about the spot. You know, I don't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Please don't tell me Man, just go and say that they're surveillance cameras, man. Right, I'm saying they're Strictly not. Strictly surveillance. They're not. I'm telling you, again, you know this. Yes, yes. So what I'm asking is for those specific cameras that are already tracking crime, if these trucks are committing violations, crimes, mm -hmm. right? Can they be set up in these areas? Because again, essentially what they're doing. It may is depend on. It may depend on the crime. And that's what I'm asking. Right. So can we check the PD yeah. find out? So we, yeah. Yeah, we have to find out if the state of Texas allows them to use them for traffic violations, mm. right? Nope. What I'm saying is, <laughs> nope. in other states, if anybody has anybody driven in Washington D.C. or some of these other East Coast cities, they have cameras. If you're going over a speed limit. You're going to get a ticket. The police don't have to be there. They also have truck uh, uh, cameras that regulate trucks that go off off of their route. If they're off their route and get taken on those cameras, there's a big fine. But here in the state of Texas, they're not, to my knowledge, they're not legal. Yeah. They're not what, what, we, what we can do... It's not necessarily getting... You, you don't have to do, give no violation. Right. So at least know the route. I'm saying the same thing with they're doing with the cameras now. They're tracking high crime areas. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. If something detecting, happens, right? Detecting somebody they, calls they, in. They did it here, but those they, cameras were malfunctioning so bad. So it's just they were pushing the stuff that didn't go out. So, so, cool. hey, so hey, we're talking. Most importantly, there's no sidewalks in Echo Heights where those trucks come running through. No We've been pushing that since 1984. Dana, you're aware of that. I've, I've been put, so literally, there have been several deaths on Parker Henderson. Uh, as my children went to Doug and Greenhurst, he is. There's no sidewalks, there are ditches on both sides. And when it rains, I remember taking my kids to school, we come up there, we're all muddy because we're walking there and there's rain and mud right here and there's no sidewalks. And we, to this moment, we have still been pushing uh, for sidewalks. They came and built a brand new pretty little bridge that was supposed to support the new trucks as they pass over because of the weight. But there's still no sidewalk. So the kids are, I mean, and you can actually uh, look up the deaths or whatever that doesn't happen on the street. You have parents who have little crosses and flowers that are sitting on the side of the street identifying their children and family members that they've lost. 
due to the fact that there is no sidewalks over there. And we've been pushing that since 1994. Okay, so the no sidewalk. Um, the no sidewalk issue uh, is one. There are a lot of neighborhoods in Fort Worth that have no sidewalk. They have this kind of an outdated drainage drainage system. We do. But this is well, the area Let me finish, please, ma'am. Can you let me finish? Just let me finish, please. So, what the city does is, as we go through and reconstruct the street, I'm not talking about resurfacing. Talking about where we have to go through and reconstruct that street. We construct it with sidewalks and drainage. That's done as part of the bond program. We have a neighborhood streets program. I think this last bond was 80 or 90 million dollars worth of neighborhood streets throughout the city that are in such bad shape that they have to be reconstructed. They can't be repaired. And when we do that, we put enough money in those projects to build out the sidewalks and the drainage system. Now in Echo Heights, I'm not sure which sections have been part of that program, but we can definitely, as part of this review, take a look at the condition of the streets in these neighborhoods and which one qualify for reconstruction. That's a total reconstruction of that street. And as part of that program, they would get sidewalks. At this point, that would happen as soon as it would happen would be as part of the, the 2026 bond program. But we'll have our TPW team take a look at all the neighborhood streets here. And as part, of, if they're part of that program, every street that we keep reconstruct will get full drainage inside. So Councilman Martinez. Mm -hmm. Real quick, Councilman, on your deal. They're asking about the park, how the park is so disrespected. They used the park to pre guess the jumping ground with wires sticking out of it to make it unsafe for the kids. So that used to be a beautiful park. Prairie Dog Park used to be a beautiful park. Now it's used as a dumping ground. In the fracking site when it rains, the, oil, the uh, sediments from that run over into the park. We have videos of it. So what are y'all gonna do about the park? They said they were gonna clean it up and never did. So the park is, Prairie Dog Park is now a dumping ground and they taken out part of the, uh, they took out a lot of the activities for the children. That was once there. There's hardly nothing there now. There's more things at the dog shelter than at the park for the children to play on. And it floods in the playground because of some other things that the city have done and the things that have been dumped in the creek. So it, it needs to be just a whole neighborhood assessment yeah. um, and not a piecemeal. But she's been holding her hand up for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> um, with, with, with us already, and we don't have lights. I'm reading the deal. With us already saying how um, this isn't enough time within the two-week frame, we've been to city council countless amount of times, so even starting back in 2021. What kind of assurance can we get from the city that you guys aren't going to push back on us with this? Because before we even met with Empire, as, as somebody has already said before, we were told by a representative to, well, you should hear them now, they're a good company. But we're yeah. study constantly telling you guys exactly what it is that we do not want within our area, but yet it seems as if it keeps getting ignored or overlooked to where it's at this point so now, we have this meeting, but this meeting isn't addressing anything that we're bringing to y'all attention. We have the August 8th meeting, but nothing has been discussed as to what that meeting that we already planning for to, to be even discussed then. So what can we get from you guys to assure us that what it is that we're bringing to your attention now, if you've heard the flooding. We had that big flood in last August. Mm -hmm. It was flooded, I don't know if anybody came and cleaned it up or if it was just the wind that just knocked it off. Yeah. But it's only one little, speed, uh, one little spot for kids to play. I have a daughter now, and at this point, my, I'm really concerned because it's not just me, it's her husband as well. Mm -hmm. And so, where it is we bring it to y'all's attention countless amount of times, when is it that you're gonna put your foot down and say, okay, they've already said that they don't want this over here, rather than saying, well, let's go about it and do it a different way, or let's push it out, or um, let's try to just get you guys to hear what this company has to say, when at this point, we're kind of fed up with hearing what these companies have to say. No offense to you, Mr. Bowie, I know you're just doing your job, but when it comes to our area, our people, 
regarding you said that some people aren't able to make it to these city council meetings or even this meeting because they have other things to do. You have a lot of single parents. You have some, like he said, stated before, you have some of the literature that's not even in Spanish, which our area is black and brown community. So what is it that you guys are going to do to reassure us that we are being heard and the black people and the Hispanics are being heard as well? So a couple of thoughts. Stop, stop treating us like we are dummies and like we are ignorant. Y'all gonna have to stop that. That stops tonight. It's gonna stop. So a couple of thoughts. One is that we're gonna get from the communications group, everybody's emails, so we have all that together. We're gonna send out all the information and maps that are here as well as we'll compile the requests that we heard. So if you missed anything, when we send it out to everybody, you can make sure that we've got that correct. On August 8th is the comprehensive plan, and which is, as Eric has talked about, is a policy, which is a guide. But there's a number of requests that I heard tonight that are outside of that comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And so some of those, we can come back with some responses fairly quickly, and others may take a little bit more time. I'm right? gonna do some research, right? I don't know about you know the OSHA piece, or I don't know about what we can find out about demographics for private companies. So there's some of that that we'll have to research. It wouldn't be part of the comprehensive plan action. But I think if we can kind of separate that out and be real clear about here, here are the requests we heard, here's what we're following up on, and then here are the you know the changes, the policy change for the comprehensive plan that would be you know could be considered. Now I do think it's totally within the mayor and council's purview if they would like to delay it. It's 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 on their agenda, right? It's been continued, they continued it to a date certain, so they will have to take it up, but what they choose to do with it that evening, you know, is up to them. So that it's up to them to, to take some action. But the one, um, I think, <coughs> what I hope is some potential good news is I had reached out to our law department earlier this evening when uh, you were asking about the moratorium. And so, uh, the, again, the attorney wants to check tomorrow, but they believe that the moratorium on industrial rezoning, if it's specific to industrial rezoning, that they may be able to have that extend until uh, that next comprehensive plan or some other date certain that the mayor and council are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So the, the 90 days and the 120 days applies to, um, as I understand it, applies to development. So for example, if I have industrial zoning today as a property owner, I have the right to develop that today. And so we're not talking about the moratorium on the development where I have the right, we're talking about the moratorium on a zoning change request. So those are two different things. So I th they think we're gonna have more flexibility to have that moratorium be longer in time than the 120 days. So I'm hoping that's, that holds true. Okay, so for existing property owners that have industrial, let's take this piece of um, vacant property over here. Could the city check and see if all these folks have their permits? Now it looks like he's about to install some um, lights, some very tall lights that's going to shine in these folks' backyard every night. Apologies, which property? Is <laughs> it? it's, it's right adjacent to uh, Eugene McCray. Okay. Um, now he's got deals that look like he's about to install lights. Now when yeah. I go on yeah. to so one address, light isn't a land use. Okay, I understand, so, but yeah. when I go on to uh, one address, I don't see a permit for that. I'm saying check to see if these oh, folks if have permit proper for permits for the work yeah. that they're about to do. Mm -hmm. So he's one that. Uh, How do you know he's going to do lights? Well, does, he, does he have them laid out on the side? Let's, let's walk out and you can see the, maybe the you, you can tell me what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah he's the got the little pole things in place no, well, he all over get his a property. For poles, I got a ticket for a pole every day <laughs> for a month until I took just a silver pole down because it was two inches yeah. over four But this what property kind of owner, and I don't, I don't want to digress, but it's an example. Yeah. He was doing things for years yeah. and wasn't getting permits. Yeah. Um, I would go to Allison Gray, I would go to others, and Cody, and he was having piles of dirt and he, he's been doing things for years, and I think it's other property owners mm -hmm. that are doing that also. They just go ahead and do what they want to do. They're not pulling permits. And what I'm saying is, let's check into it. Mm -hmm. I just want to kind of piggyback on, and we were speaking about the sidewalks. Uh, Councilman Martinez, uh, about a month ago, Councilman Bibbins had a meeting at the library of uh, 30 with South, um, White Hills Manor, I think it's White Hills, but yeah, White Lake Hill and Randall. So 
she was trying to push sidewalks on them that they don't want. And so then she said, I have a, a lady here who would love to get those sidewalks in her community, right, Miss James? And I said, absolutely. So she has, and I don't know if that can be transferred or pushed over, but they don't want the sidewalks. We want the sidewalks. So Is there any way you can communicate with her to move I that over here? I don't know, I just heard her say she asked me during the meeting, Ms. James, would, would your area like those sidewalks? And I said, yes, yeah, so I'm saying. Well, let me, let me just give you a little time. That's not quite how it works. Okay. Yeah, more sidewalks, so put them in over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want them. Just take them. We want them. So just talk to your whole council. They can probably use that money for something else. Yeah. But right. I, I'm going to really push for the neighborhood improvement grant mm -hmm. here, in, like we've seen in other neighborhoods. And that would, uh, if we get it, mm -hmm. uh, that would bring improvements to the park, sidewalks, and streets. Yeah, um, cameras. Separate from, uh, I guess, the bond uh, project that you're talking about. In addition to. Because oh, the bond would take a little bit longer, yeah. but this, this would be, be could be sooner. <coughs> so, so yeah. I just want to add one thing. There. In addition to everything we have going on over there, that 287 Connect the Corridor is coming through, and that's going to bring more pollution to our area. Eric, smile. Not, not, not. <laughs> 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 I'm more pollution, but we are so it's going to get worse for us. And like I keep saying, the area should never have been industrialized. Some of that stuff needs to go, including some of your 100 locks. So you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some of that mess we have over there. So just to be clear, that everyone here sign in and left your email. Email, if you don't want to give your phone number, that's fine, but we do need an email in order for you to be corresponded with and share the information and the updates and yes. Yes. move forward. Yes. We need to make sure that we're able, and so long that y'all understand, it's Echo Heights Stop 6 Environmental Coalition. It doesn't have to be sent to the Sahara Club. It doesn't have to be sent to Downwinders, although they are always included. It doesn't have to be sent to Community Frontline. It needs to be sent to us. So then we'll share or we can you know, CC them on it. And we don't mind, but please make sure that we're involved and included in the conversation that we initially started to begin with. Thank you. So we gotta get out of here, right? Yeah, yeah you gotta go home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 For reference, there's a list right here. Yeah, there's dots on the map right here.